Bug is one of the most unfortunate types in the world of competitive Pokemon. In the early generations, Bug types were very limited defensively and had extremely scarce attacking options. With the introduction of Stealth Rock to the game, which punished all Rock Week Pokemon including Bugs, they suffered even more. Viable competitive Bug types tend to be a rarity, but they do exist. Sometimes Bug types can overcome all of these roadblocks if they have enough advantages in other areas or if they are blessed with powerful complementary types. Let's take a look at all of the relevant bug types in competitive singles for every single generation and how this type has evolved and adapted to its environment over the years. But first, a situation. The future paradox form of Rotom Frost, Iron Frigilis, has forced me against my will to start a podcast with him, which has been aptly named The Fridge. This is one of the coolest podcasts ever conceived, and I recently interviewed one of my favorite fellow YouTubers, Big Yellow. It was a great conversation, so go check it out and subscribe to The Fridge for more interviews in the future. Thank you. We are of course kicking things off with generation one and folks, when you search bug in the gen one team builder, you are met with this on your screen and it is a tragedy. The highest ranked bug in the entire game is Venomoth. There are zero bug types ranked in OU. This is the best in the game, Venomoth. It has a whopping 90 special, 90 speed. This is the best that they could do. Venomoth is a great Pokemon down in the never used tier where it has access to such premier options as Sleep Powder, Stun Spore and Psychic and humorous Honestly, the only bug type attack this Pokemon has access to is Leech Life, which has a whopping 20 power. Bug type attacks in Gen 1 are horrendous, truly horrible. Even though this is technically the highest ranked bug in the game, I don't think it's the best bug in the OU format because with its poison typing, it's weak to Alakazam, it's too slow, there are way better sleep setters available in OU. The only bug type that is perhaps viable in OU, and to say so is a stretch, would probably be Pinsa. Pinsa is actually a Pokemon with pretty good stats, especially by Gen 1 standards. 125 base attack is great. Solid defense stat and a bug typing does grant a resistance to ground which can be relevant one of the most common attacks in gen 1 is earthquake so you can switch in against that another thing pincer has going for it is its access to swords dance which back in gen 1 was a very scarce option if you just search for sword dance nothing OU ranked gets it there's like victory bell and kingla as some of the best swords dance users available so pincer at least stands out a bit from those i don't think it's as good as victory bell or kingla who both have some advantages but it can take advantage of swords dance with its high attack stat decent speed and hyper beam always a good move to have in gen 1 can bypass the charge effect if you get a ko slash is something it's got a high crit chance you can defeat people with reflect such as snorlax and chancy if you you simply are fortunate submission is fighting coverage it's a horrendous attack of course it has 80 power 80 accuracy and recoil but this lets you hit like ride on or you know the normal types you also have bind which is similar to wrap and clamp it immobilizes the enemy so you can use this to chip them into range of hyper beam it is unfortunate that uh gengar can switch in against this and stop it and also it has a 75 accuracy so it is very likely that after a few binds one of them will miss and you'll be in a terrible position but it is something i mean if you're gonna build around any possible bug type in gen 1 ou this is the one this is the only real one and unfortunately i don't think pincer even gets a single bug type attack no the mono bug type the premier bug type in the entire world no bug type attacks <laughs> The quintessential and most iconic bug type is probably Beedrill for Gen 1. It might be the first Pokemon you think of when you imagine a bug type in your mind, but Beedrill is really bad. It has very low stats. It does have Swords Dance and Bug Stab, but the Bug Stab in question is Twin Needle, which is extremely bad. A Pin Missile, which is... As a power of 14, folks, I mean, what the heck? The most relevant use of a bug type attack in Gen 1 OU is sometimes Jolteon uses Pin Missile as coverage against Exeggutor. Because Exeggutor is very common and very powerful. It's Grass Psychic type, so it is times four weak to bug. So even though Pin Missile has the worst power of all time, Jolteon can at least have some times four super effective coverage to hit it with. I'm not a fan of the option, but that's like the, the best thing you're ever going to get out of a bug type attack in Gen 1 OU, probably.
I think that the bug type was added pretty late in development or something, which is why it's not very well thought out in Gen 1 with very limited options and not much identity for bug types yet. But later in the franchise, they would give bug types more tools and flesh them out a bit more, of course. And when Generation 2 came around, we finally saw a couple of OU ranked bug types for the first time ever. There's two of them, and they're both pretty good options. Floratrus is actually a very good Pokemon. Floratrus has a bug steel typing, and this is one one of the best type combinations in the entire game. Bug type on its own has a lot of issues, but with steel to complement, they actually work very well together because bug cancels out the ground weakness of steel and the fighting weakness and rock weakness that bug has is also canceled out by steel. So you're neutral to a lot of the stuff that these two types individually are weak to and you only have one weakness to fire and you have a lot of resistances. So it's a great defensive typing, especially in a metagame where Snorlax is running around everywhere. Uh, Fortress is a really good switch into Snorlax and it can punish Snorlax with its high defense stat, access to toxic to put it on a clock a little bit and rapid spin and spikes are fantastic utility too. Spikes, one of the best ways to punish enemy switch ends and actually force progress against certain things. Rapid Spin removes hazards from your side of the field, which was a new concept in Gen 2 as well. In the last slot, Fortress usually runs an attack. Hidden Power Fire is nice to hit enemy steel types like even an enemy Fortress or Skarmory, but you can also do Hidden Power Ghost to hit incoming Gengars trying to spin block you or Misdreavus as well. But Fortress was a good proof of concept in the franchise that Bug can have a lot of defensive benefits on the right Pokemon and the Bug typing complements Steel so well. And Fortress is a pretty solid defensive Pokemon throughout the years too. And another powerful new Bug type that debuted in Gen 2 and is ranked in the OU format is Heracross, who actually does use its Bug type offensively. Very good stats for the generation with Rest, Sleep, Talk, Curse, and Mega Horn. This can be a pretty nice wall breaker and win condition. Even though Bug does have its disadvantages as a type, I mean, when you have such a high attack stat, you get the stat boost and Mega Horn as well is a very high power attack. By Gen 2 standards, this can actually be a really nice win condition. It is stopped by all the steel types like Steelix, Skarmory, and of course Foratrus that are running around. It also suffers from the fact that flying resists bug. So there's a lot of stuff that resists a bug in Gen 2, but you can kind of brute force through them a bit with Heracross. So first time that bug actually functioned offensively was with Heracross. This is the first time ever. And another noteworthy bug released in Generation 2 was Scizor, who also has that fantastic bug steel typing. Scizor is not quite at the peak of its relevance yet. It's ranked in UUBL, just shy of OU, but it is sometimes seen for its access to Baton Pass, which allows you to pass useful boosts boosts to teammates and it's no slouch offensively either with 130 base attack. It unfortunately doesn't have a good bug type attack like Heracross does but stab boost and that high attack it's probably the best option you have offensively but the purpose of scissor is not really to be a threat it's to support allies with boosts and it can do it quite well because it's bulky it has that fantastic typing to come in soak some hits spend a turn actually boosting up past speed and attack to your teammates i think that this strategy got a lot worse because they have restricted baton pass in gen 2 quite a bit i think that the combination of mean look trapping and baton pass is now banned because you were able to create these uninteractive situations with that combination so I think that Baton Pass strategies are a bit too easy to stop because of the prevalence of raw and no common mechanics to like counteract that from getting you. But still, it's an option. It exists and it has been all right throughout the format's history. Another noteworthy bug released in Gen 2 is Shuckle. Usually this is like a gimmick Pokemon that props up sometimes, but with its extremes in defense and special defense, it does have its uses throughout the generations, including in Gen 2. Despite being ranked in NU, you can use this guy as a pure PP stall wall, like just to sit there and soak hits for a hundred years because Defense Curl has 61 PP, Flash has 32. You can sit there and just be an absolute annoying pest if you like. And Bug and Rock for the time was decent defensive typing. I mean, Bug cancels out the ground weakness of Rock type and Bug also cancels out the grass weakness of Rock type. And then Rock type has its nice resistance to Snorlax, normal type stab. Probably not very fun to use or to play with. You're just sitting there for a thousand years, but Shuckle did get some 
some cool tools later in the generations that we'll talk about in the future. In generation three, we still have the same two bug types as the only OU ranked bug types, but I think both of these Pokemon got a lot better. Heracross, especially gaining the ability Guts in gen three, which is a fantastic new ability, which grants an attack boost if you're status. You have way more attacking options. You're more immediately threatening in this generation rather than cursing and resting and stuff. You have Swords Dance to boost your attack by a lot in one turn. You have options like Brick Break for immediate fighting stab and fighting stab is very valuable in a format where Tyranitar is everywhere and Blissey is everywhere. Focus Punch is a fantastic new tool that can defeat various switch-ins and bug type itself is much better in gen 3 there's way more relevant pokemon to hit and it's just a big neutral move swarm is also another ability option that serves to buff the power of bug type attacks when you're at one third or less of your max health so heracross with substitute and salak berry can bring its health down on purpose with the substitute eat the salak berry and now have mega horns that are boosted by swarm and sometimes even swords dance this is a fantastic late game cleaner set so bug type really felt like a powerful offensive type in this generation, especially on Heracross. And Bug type became a common coverage type too to hit those fellows like Celebi and Starmie and Claydol. Another thing that makes Heracross nice is that it can be used alongside Magneton now. Magnet Pull is a new tool for Magneton, allowing it to trap and eliminate steel types, especially Skarmory. So with a reliable way to eliminate steels, Megahorn becomes even stronger because you can eliminate those pesky resistances. Foratress also got an upgrade. Now you can stack multiple multiple spikes in this generation and steel typing is even more valuable in a world where sandstorm is everywhere you have an immunity to sandstorm damage. Fortress can now use its bug type offensively and it's quite good because bug threatens both of the most common spinners in the format, Stami and Claydol. It's also helpful to have versus Celebi. So Hidden Power Bug is one of the most common attacks that you see on Foratress. You can also run Explosion on it, which is a very powerful move in Gen 3 to just trade with an enemy or just do a lot of damage on the way out after you've already made spikes. Really great way to start off a game is to just make a few spikes and then blow up on something. Foratress also matches up quite well against Skarmory. I mean, Skarmory did exist back in Gen 2, but now Skarmory is significantly buffed because it can make spikes as well. You can switch in on Skarmory you don't worry about poison you can rapid spin in its face and that bug steel type combination feels even better in this environment amaldo is another cool new option that debuted in gen 3 decent pokemon it's ranked in uubl it can sometimes be used on defensive teams for its access to knockoff which is a very rare option pretty much this and hariyama are the two prominent viable knockoff users in the format i made a video about this recently amaldo is also very good against snorlax because of its normal resistance and the ability battle armor granting an immunity to crits so you can defense boost in Snorlax's face and not worry about getting crit eventually because you're totally immune and the bug typing with stab is quite nice because it significantly helps you out versus enemies such as Claydol and Celebi. Ninjask is a bit of a controversial bug type in the OU metagame, living up to the insect pest-like identity of the bug type for certain. Ninjask is used for its ability Speed Boost, which grants one speed stage every turn, a pretty outstanding ability. It also has Baton Pass, so it can pass those speed boosts to teammates. This is the most reliable way to pass speed boost to teammates because you don't have to sit there and click a move like Agility or Dragon Dance first. You passively generate speed boosts by just protecting or sub Substituting. And sometimes with a speed boost on some powerful wall breaker like Marowak or Metacham or Hariyama, you can win the game very quickly. This was abused on Baton Pass chains with Mr. Mime in the past. There have been rule set updates to account for such things more recently, but Ninjask is still used from time to time, even at high level play for its ability to punish specific matchups, punish people for not bringing enough phasing, win quickly with an all-in kind of strategy, all-in on speed passing to some powerful three threats and going for the throat. Gen 3 also introduced Shedinja into the ecosystem, one of the most intriguing designs in all of Pokemon history. Shedinja is a very gimmicky Pokemon, a very novel Pokemon. It has a single point of HP, one literal HP. So any kind of damage whatsoever will KO it. However, it has the ability Wonder Guide, which grants immunity to all attacks that aren't super effective. So it has a lot of immunities, making 
it a niche counterpick to certain fellows that don't have the super effective attacks on bug and ghost. Yeah. Sometimes see it prop up in like Uber's formats here and there for this little utility. It's a bit of a matchup fish sometimes, but it can be okay. In generation three, it has an unfortunate time because sandstorm and spikes are everywhere, which just instantly KO the little guy, unfortunately. However, it does see some use in Uber's, but even up there, it's worried about spikes and also pursuit too. So even without sand to worry about, there's a lot for little Shedinja to have concern over, isn't there? But he has his uses it from time to time. Interesting Pokemon. And finally, a shout out to Butterfree, who gained the ability Compound Eyes in Gen 3. I mean, I'm not going to call this a particularly fantastic Pokemon, but this is one that surprised me recently with the utility of both an accurate sleep and paralysis move, item removal in the form of Thief, and then you can do Whirlwind as the last slot or like Sunny Day or some support thing if you like. It's not terrible. It's also good bug flying typing. It's immune to spikes. Not as terrible as it looks in Gen 3. And Compound Eyes was a significant buff, granting 1.3 times accuracy to all of your moves, making Sleep Powder and Stun Spore that much more accurate. This is the only Pokemon that can get an accurate Sleep and Paralysis move on its moveset, besides Smeagol, of course. But even then, it's a bit better because you can Stun Spore against ground types, can't you? In Gen 4, a bit of a disaster happened, a bit of a tragedy happened to the bug type with the release of Stealth Rock to the game, which is an entry hazard that deals damage based on your weakness to rock. Bug is, of course, weak to rock, so most bug types are just severely gutted to the point of being completely unviable. Especially bug flying types are just down the drain because they take a half of their HP bar by simply switching in. Simply by trying to exist, they are punished for their mere existence. It's a, it's a tragedy, truly. So as you can see, the only two OU ranked bug types are those that have the good old bug steel typing. What the addition of Stealth Rock did is basically restrict the viability of bug types to the point where you need a complementary type that resists rock or you are a fake Pokemon. Heracross at least has bug fighting, so it's some semi usable in Gen 4 too. But as you can see, the only two OU ranked bug types here are Foratrice and Sizzle. Foratrice is doing the same stuff it always has done with its spikes and rapid spin. It still has explosion. That's probably useful. Does it have any bug type attacks? Not really. It doesn't really have any good physical bug type attacks to use. So that's a bit of a detriment. There's a new special attacking bug type option of signal beam if you're interested. I don't know if you're interested, but you might be. But if there's one thing that did happen in Gen 4, it was the significant rise of Scizor, who became the new champion of the bug type, gaining a new ability, Technician, which is a fantastic new option, granting 1.5 times power to moves below 60 power, which include options such as bullet punch or bug Bite. Scizor also gained access to one of the best moves in Pokemon history that is still a staple of competitive singles to this day, U-Turn, a move that deals damage, bug type damage, and then switches out. So many Pokemon, pretty much any Pokemon that can get this move, uses it. The ability to safely pivot while doing damage is outstanding. Bug types have the benefit of Stab U-Turn, which is very nice. Scizor also gets such options as Super Power now, which is a significant new coverage tool to get that before also gets like pursuit which is now a physical attack and can punish enemies for switching out pretty nice against psychic types and other such fellows dragon types that you come in and resist with your outstanding typing the final noteworthy bug type of gen 4 is yun mega who is definitely very held back by its bug flying typing it's ranked in uubl so it's like almost viable almost good but that bug flying typing does hold it back significantly however it has access to two outstanding abilities. Speed Boost, which Ninjask also has, granting one speed stage at the end of turn, and Tinted Lens, which causes you to deal double damage on not very effective moves, basically cancelling out the resistance of moves. So that turns something like a Choice Specs boosted Bug Buzz into a pretty powerful wall-breaking tool, because guess what? Nothing resists the thing. And you have a respectable special attack, decent speed to take advantage of that. Unfortunately, this set is just too frail, I think, to really do much with such a concept. And it's difficult to get on the field and contend with the stealth rock. This set does lead with Yun Mega rather than trying to switch it in. Because if you just lead with the guy, send it out first, then it doesn't have to worry about switching into stealth rock, does it? So this you can use for speed boost, outrun whatever's in front of you and just start the game off with some offense. It's a decent choice. You could probably make it work. It probably sees some use in high level play here and there but 
yeah, obviously held back by its bug identity. Here we are in Gen 5, and by now I'm sure you're starting to notice a pattern. Oh, what a surprise! Foratrice and Scizor appear to be ranked in OU, and there's very little in the way of other bug types present, is there? It turns out that the bug steel type combination is aged very well and continues to rise to the top. It's not for lack of trying, they did design quite a few new bug types in Gen 5, but not many of them had much success. There is one exception, we'll get to that of course, but Sizzle feels even better in Gen 5 than it did back in Gen 4 with Psychic types and Dragon types becoming more prominent, meaning your resistances and your offensive type profile feel more relevant than ever. Pursuit helps to defeat fellows such as Alakazam and Reuniclus and Latios. With Politoed for support, you can also patch up that fire weakness a little bit thanks to the rain. Permanent rain being a new mechanic enhances bug steel typing even further, doesn't it? Foratress does feel a bit worse here, I will say, but it does have some significant new tools. Sturdy is now a different ability which leaves you at 1 HP, similar to the effect of a Focus Sash, which is very nice for a Hazard Setter, isn't it? It also has an Overcoat, which is useful on Hail Teams. You can use this on Hail Teams and be immune to both kinds of chip damage, Hail and Sandstorm in one. You also have a new option, Volt Switch, which allows you to attack and pivot. Very useful to be able to pivot out with this fella. So Foratress has its little advantages, probably not as good as it was in past generations though, not as common. And now of course we have to discuss the elephant in the room, Volcarona, who debuted in Generation 5 and is one of the first examples of a times 4 rock weak bug type that is viable in spite of its crippling weakness to Stealth Rock, purely because the rest of its advantages are just that good. This is a Pokemon kept in check by Stealth Rock because without Stealth Rock it would be an absolute dominant machine of destruction. And even with Stealth Rock existing and punishing this greatly, it is still one of the most controversial Pokemon in history. It has been nicknamed the Matchup Moth. Volcarona has a monstrous 135 special attack, solid base speed. On top of that, good bulk and access to one of the best moves ever printed, Quiver Dance, which raises three stats. I thought raising two stats was good, but you get three stats? What the heck? Special attack, special defense, and speed are raised. So Volcarona can snowball out of control very quickly. In a single boost, it can sometimes win a game single-handedly. Depending on what coverage it's running to, you can run Hidden Power Ice on it to defeat such fellows as Garchomp. Glyscore, Landorus, Theron, you got Giga Drain for grass coverage against all those rain threats, or perhaps Psychic if you want to hit Tentacruel, who was one of your most common checks for super effective damage. Volcarona was even worse in the past with gems existing. Volcarona, the prime abuser of gems, which were a consumable item that allowed you to deal 1.5 times damage on an attack once, similar to a Z-move. This would allow Volcarona to just absolutely blow past a variety of checks with such powerful damage that it was unreasonable. And Volcarona has remained viable and prevalent ever since its release. I mean, in every generation, this guy is doing stuff and it seems to benefit from every new mechanic they make, like Z-moves and Terra and other such things. Definitely a Pokemon that lives up to the bug-like identity of pesthood, doesn't it? It's it's always causing problems for people. Excelgore, I don't know how to pronounce this to be quite honest. I guess Excelgore is like acceleration, so that makes sense. It's speedy and that adds up thematically. This is an attempt to make a good bug type and it was kind of successful because Excelgore is not that good in OU, but it does have a niche in Ubers because of its enormous speed tier and access to spikes, yawn and U-turn, which are pretty nice ways to kick off the game by setting hazards on the field. You actually outrun Darkrai, which is cool, and you can hit it with a stab bug buzz if you like. Speedy hazard setting leads like this tend to be quite good in Ubers, so that's interesting, isn't it? That a Pokemon can be better in Ubers than it is in OU. That does happen from time to time. Escavalier is a new bug steel type introduced in Gen 5. It's not very good, it's ranked in RU. It's competing, of course, with Foratress and Scizor, the two kings of bug steel typing, who both excel in their respective areas. Scizor offensive and Foratress more defensive. Escavalier is trying to be somewhere in between. It's very bulky, uh, high attack stat, but very low speed. And to be frank with you, it's totally outclassed by Scizor who has access to priority and similar bulk, to be honest, similar options. It does have Mega Horn. Scizor doesn't have that, but it doesn't need Mega Horn, really, Scizor. It has Bug Bite and U-Turn for Bug-type Stab. 
in its arsenal. Escavalier doesn't quite stand out among the fellow bug steel types that exist. I do like its visual design though, and it's got a cool name, a bit of wordplay. And finally, we have Galvantula, who might be my favorite bug type design from Gen 5 OU. It didn't quite stick the landing in competitive. Maybe they should have given this guy a bit more stats, to be honest. It's lacking in the special attack department, but I like the typing. Bug Electric, it, visual design, it's fantastic. Very classic Pokemon feel to this guy. And Compound Eyes is really cool here alongside Thunder for an accurate high power Thunder. And it also gets, you know, Volt Switch. Bug Electric is a cool offense of typing. This guy would become a bit better later in the franchise. Received some significant new tools. In Generation 5, its debut it wasn't the best, unfortunately. This could have been a great fellow if it just had a bit more stats, perhaps a little bit of a push in some other area too. But I like the design of it. I think their head was in the right place when they were cooking this one up. They did a good job. In Generation 6, we saw the new mechanic Mega Evolutions bless the bug types with some new firepower. Mega Pinsir is probably the most noteworthy one. Pinsir in its base form was outclassed by Scizor and Heracross for generations, but now Mega Pinsir is one of the premier wall breakers of the format with the ability Aerolate, which converts normal type moves into flying type moves and grants them a power boost. So return hits really hard. Quick attack is now a flying type priority move and the guy's stats are through the roof with 155 attack. This is enough to make up for the bug flying typing. High defense too, by the way. That's nothing to sneeze at. Random 120 defense on this. You do need support to run this fellow though. You've got to get rid of those stealth rocks. This is what it takes to be viable in spite of times for rock weakness. You just need to be insanely OP in other areas and Pinsa certainly is. Scizor is also ranked in OU in its base form without Mega Evolving and in its Mega form. To Mega Evolve, you do require an item and Sizzle does get significantly enhanced stats when it mega evolves, but you sacrifice that access to something like Choice Band or Life Orb or Leftovers, don't you? So there is merit to not running Mega Scizor, but Mega Scizor is absolutely the superior choice most of the time with its much higher 150 attack, much higher 140 defense. This is a very powerful bulky win condition, especially because it can leverage that bulk into a powerful attack that has a priority on it, can't it? Mega Scizor is basically just Scizor, but with more stats, which isn't very interesting, frankly. Maybe they could have done something a bit unique with the Mega form instead of making it the same Pokemon, but better. But that's neither here nor there, is it? Mega Heracross is also kind of cool. It has 185 attack. I mean, pretty absurd. And Skill Link as a new option. Skill Link makes multi-hit moves always hit the max number of times. So Pin Missile becomes a really powerful attack. And as does Rock Blast. This is also one of the few bug type wall breakers that is not too vulnerable to rocks. It at least has a neutrality to rock. So it has that advantage over the competition. I think Scolipede deserves a shout out in the Gen 6 metagame. This guy... Debuted in Gen 5, but in Generation 6, it got access to Speed Boost, which was a significant buff. We know how good this ability is, of course. And it had Baton Pass. So early on in the metagame, this was a really good Speed Passer that also had access to Hazards, making it a little bit more useful than something like Ninjas. Baton Pass, of course, eventually did get banned in Generation 6 entirely. So that was short-lived, but for a time, Scolipede was quite the menace. Remember Shuckle? He's still here and he became quite a lot better in Gen 6 thanks to one small option, Sticky Web, an all new bug type move that enhanced many bug types to come. Sticky Web is a new entry hazard that lowers the enemy's speed if they switch in. And Shuckle is perhaps the most popular Sticky Web setter in the game back in Gen 6. And it's still a pretty good option in later generations too, because it has access to Stealth Rock as well. It has the built-in focus sash of the sturdy ability. It has a natural outstanding bulk. Encore also for some disruption in the lead matchups and you can chuck a mental herb on it. Since you don't have to spend your item slot on a focus sash, you can go ahead and give it this, which will disable taunt once. If the enemy tries to taunt you to deny your hazards, the mental herb will block that, which is pretty cool. Shuckle is commonly used on sticky web offense teams in generation six, which are pretty decent and feature fellows such as Bishop and other such slowish offense of threats that benefit from the enemy's speed being lowered. Galvantula also gained Sticky Web, which is a really nice tool for it, giving it a bit more identity, a bit more usefulness. It wasn't quite as good as Shuckle or even Smeagol for such a role in Gen 6, I think, but still 
a significant tool to receive, isn't it? And finally, we have Mega Beedrill, who is not OU ranked, but I think it's cool. They gave Beedrill a bit more offensive firepower that it was sorely lacking in. The ability Adaptability grants extra stab damage, which gives it big bug type attacks, doesn't it? And it has really absurdly high attack and speed, but it simply has no bulk. It suffers from rock weakness, and it's also very bad against Landorus Therian, who is one of the most common Pokemon in OU, so... Not quite on OU level. In Generation 7, yet again, we only have a measly two bug types in OU. It's a tough experience for bugs. It really is. And once again, it's Mega Scizor. Scizor in some form existing in OU for generations at this point. Volcarona is back too in OU. Mega Scizor doing basically the same thing it did back in Gen 6. Powerful, bulky, good win condition guy has knockoff. Volcarona was not ranked in OU back in Gen 6. It still sees use sometimes. It's not a bad Pokemon. In fact, it's quite good back in Gen 6. But in Gen Gen 7, we received the Z-Move mechanic, which massively enhanced Volcarona's capabilities, granting it basically a similar mechanic to Gems of Gen 5, with a one-time use huge nuke per game. You can only have one of these per team. To use it on Volcarona and secure your boosts, defeat some check with a huge bug type of Bugginium Z Blast. I mean, what's better than that? Buzzwall is an all new bug type presence in Generation 7. And this is quite a funny one. It's a big muscular bug with humanoid features, which I find amusing personally. It has Beast Boost, which all of the Ultra Beasts have, granting it a stat raise on its largest stat if it earns a KO. Very good ability. And with a bug fighting typing and fantastic defensive stats, access to healing, a solid move pool. This is a usable Pokemon in OU, not quite OU ranked though. It has its shortcomings on the special side, it's a bit slow. Maybe the fast pace of this metagame with Z moves running around and various coverage to hit you super effectively. You have your roadblocks on Buzzwall. Definitely something that you can work with. And a novel take on the bug type, isn't it? Araquanid is another new bug type design in Gen 7 that I think is quite flavorful and cool. It's a water bug, which is a pretty uncommon type combination. And it has the ability Water Bubble, which I think is pretty awesome design. It has times two power on water moves, immune to burn and additional fire resistance, halving damage of fire type attacks against it. It has low attack, but with water bubble to boost your water type of damage, you can actually hit pretty hard with this guy. It also has sticky web for some utility and magic coat is another cool utility option, anti-enemy hazards. So this is a decent option as a sticky web setter in gen seven, which can be a good offense enabler. And I think it's one of the most flavorfully done bug types in recent memory. Unfortunately, it's not the most viable thing in the world. They didn't give it many stats, but I appreciate the creativity of this one. I do. Rubombi is another very solid sticky web setter. I suppose it's a role that's not common enough for you to have enough usage in OU to be ranked firmly in OU, but it's definitely a viable choice for a sticky web setter and it's faster than most of them, which has a lot of value. It has shield dust too, which has its uses granting an immunity to secondary effects. And with Stab Moonblast and a Fairy Typing, which comes in handy, Rubombi is nothing to sneeze at. I quite like this Pokemon, and I think that it's one of the better modern bug types in terms of its viability. And I thought I'd give a shout out to Golisopod because they sort of tried to make a novel, interesting bug type. It missed the mark a little bit. It's not a very good Pokemon. They went in an interesting direction with this one. It's another bug water type Pokemon. It has first impression, a new signature move for the guy, which has a massive 90 base power for a priority move that's enormous, but much like Fake Out, it has the same mechanic. It only works the first turn that you're out. So if you switch this guy in, wait a turn, you can no longer use first impression. It only works on the first turn. It also has this ability, Emergency Exit, which forcefully switches you out if you reach half health or less. This is actually kind of a, an Achilles heel for Golisopod because you can just hit it very easily and then it is just forced to exit instead of hitting you back. So you can just disrupt the guy and with rock weakness to contend with and other such shortcomings, it's never saw the light of OU. Definitely a novel design and I respect the attempt. I think. I respect the attempt. In Generation 8, bug types would receive the greatest tool they have ever received. Access to the new item, Heavy Duty Boots, which grants a total immunity to the effects of hazards on your Pokemon. Bug types obviously love this. No more pointy stones to ruin their life. Volcarona can now wear boots and be completely immune to stealth rock damage. That is so enormous, it's crazy. However, you'll notice that despite this enormous new option that should almost solve 90% of the issues of bug types, you'll notice that actually there's still only two OU ranked bug types, despite receiving 
Such a significant buff, the type still has its shortcomings, evidently. Volcarona obviously skyrocketed to the bug moon after receiving boots, becoming one of the premier threats of the metagame. Even without Z-moves existing anymore, didn't matter. Boots were such a buff. Buzzwall was also a better fit in the Gen 8 world and became more of a staple than it was in Gen 7. The metagame slowed down a bit, no more Z-moves, less explosive threats, and a cut Pokedex to give a bit of a fresh start for Buzzwall. Certain Buzzwall had its day in the sun in Generation 8. I also forgot to mention that Leech Life received a buff in Generation 7, making it an 80 base power move that heals 50% rather than whatever it was before, I think 20 power, a completely nothing move. Now it was a legitimate option for bug type stab. Buzzwall certainly loves to have access to such an option in Generation 8 OU. And we have some attempts at bug type design here with Center Scorch, another fire bug type that's more physical attack leaning with I mean, a decent move pool. You've got such options as Knock Off, Power Whip, that's coverage, Leech Life, and Fire Lash, which has a defense lowering effect. But I mean, the guy's a bit too slow. He suffers from such shortcomings as being a bug type ranked in ZUBL. I like the name, I like the visual design and some fairly unique traits. Didn't quite hit the mark though. This one doesn't quite function as intended. Frostmoth is another one that they attempted to make into a Pokemon and it, it's kind of almost there. It sounds good when you describe it, but in practice its typing was just too much of a shortcoming, but it's a bit similar to Volcarona in its design philosophy with ice bug typing, so really good offensive typing. Really works well with the new boots item. I think it was designed with such a thing in mind and access to Quiver Dance, of course. Very few Pokemon get such an option. And with ice stab, this sounds pretty good. And on top of all that, it has the ability ice scales to make up for its poor typing a little bit, which grants halved damage from all special attacks. Really amazing ability in a vacuum, but not quite enough to supplement the poor defensive typing of Frostmoth. And this is ranked in PU, unfortunately. And then of course we have Blip Bug, who changed the entire face of the Pokemon franchise when it released as one of the most powerful Pokemon ever conceived. Just kidding, I I was looking through the bug type and I, I've never seen Blip Bug in my life. This is a goofy looking fellow and I'm not sure what he's doing here, but, but hello. And finally, here we are in Gen 9 and things never change, do they? I'm easily two bug types in OU once again. It is pathetic. We need to do something about it. We need to, we need to have a bug revolution of some kind. It's just not good enough. Volcarona is a prime abuser of the new terrestrialization mechanic and it has been a controversial Pokemon in Generation 9. Volcarona's greatest Downfall is its typing, bug fire. It has so many weaknesses, so many shortcomings, especially to Stealth Rock back in the day, but now it can patch that up with Boots, the Stealth Rock weakness, and it can also patch up its other type weaknesses with Terrastalization, turning into a whole different type like Water or Ground. And on top of turning into that type for its defensive benefits, you also gain the offensive benefit of extra damage on your coverage moves, extra stab, while maintaining the previous offensive benefits of bug and fire typing for their stab boosts. So you really just get everything and lose very little. Terrastalizing is a resource, of course, that can only do one per game, but what better Pokemon to spend it on than a boosted up sweeper like Volcarona? This Pokemon was previously banned in Gen 9 OU. It then got unbanned. I believe that there's some discussion surrounding it again, and people don't like the guy. It's the matchup moth doing what it does best. Robombi is now OU ranked, and quite honestly, I am proud. Robombi is the premier sticky web setter in the game, even outdoing such options as Smeagol and Araquanid and Galvantula. It is speedier than all of them. It also has Stab Moonblast, which is fantastic against the most common rapid spinner in the game, Great Tusk. You outrun Great Tusk and threaten to one hit KO it, which of course enhances your game plan of making hazards. They're not going to stay and click rapid spin if they are potentially losing their entire Great Tusk in the process. So. Robombi is a great fit in the Gen 9 metagame, and Sticky Webs are a solid offensive archetype. Low Kicks is one of the coolest Pokemon in Gen 9. Cool visual design, a lot of personality, a simple yet evocative name, a bug dark typing, you don't see that one too often, and Tinted Lens is also a cool ability that you 
I think we've previously never seen this on a physical attacker before, so that's fun. This is another Pokemon with previously the signature move of Golisopod, now a more widely distributed option. First impression, which is cool. That's something, and it has a pretty good move pool overall with great stab options with U-turn, knockoff, and sucker punch. Unfortunately, the biggest drawback of low kicks is just the stats. Not bad, to be honest, to be ranked UU in Gen 9. It's a world of high power creep, and for a Route 1 bug to be UU ranked, I think is respectable. Slither Wing is the past paradox form of Volcarona, and it's one of my favorite of the paradox forms. I like its visual design. Unique twist on Volcarona as a more physically leaning Pokemon. It even has a Will-O-Wisp for some utility. It's got first impression as well, which as I mentioned before, is more widely distributed now. It has U-turn for pivoting, and it also gets a boost in the sun. So you can become a bit of a wall breaker if you so desire. And Slitherwing, has gone back and forth between the tiers. I remember it being a staple of UU in the past. Now it's ranked RU, but I think I've also seen it in OU sometimes for its unique typing and options and such. It has some benefit. Priority is always nice to have too. Definitely an interesting Pokemon. Cleavor is a new option in Gen 9 that was from Pokemon Legends, Arceus, and was available to use ever since home compatibility released. This is one with a lot of hype surrounding it at the time that sounded really good in theory, largely due to the fact that it has this move right here, Stone Axe, which attacks and sets Stealth Rock on the field, along with Sharpness, which boosts slicing moves, including Stone Axe. This sounded outstanding. It's one of the strongest sounding moves we've ever heard of. But in practice, it wasn't that good because it has little longevity. It was pretty easy to stop defensively. Not as worth running as other hazard setters and aggressive openers that maybe hit harder or have more useful options. Clevo, unfortunately, did not quite work very well in practice and did not end up in OU. It's ranked in RU. Rabska is yet another Pokemon that sounded really good in theory, primarily because of one important moveset option, and that is Revival Blessing. This is a new mechanic in Gen 9 that allows you to revive a fainted ally, similar to the revive item from the single player game. And it only has one PP, so you're gonna use this once per battle. Rapscar also has access to Trick Room, which can be a good combo alongside Revival Blessing to revive slow, bulky allies and such. But Trick Room strategies are not very good in singles with not enough turns to really take advantage of them. And Revival Blessing is also not the greatest momentum play, it's only once per battle. Rabska is terrible typing, especially in a world where dark and ghost types are even more common than ever. Bug Psychic is horrendous typing. You don't really have the bulk to show for it, and even if you do get the opportunity to click Revival Blessing, you're probably gonna faint in the process yourself and be left with a 50% ally. Is that worth it? Usually not. If you're gonna use Revival Blessing, Pormot is the superior fellow for it, but even Pormot is not too fantastic in OU, is it? And finally, of course, we have the Pokemon Spydops, a new addition in Gen 9, who may not be very powerful in the game of Pokemon, but in the game of life, Spydops is a top tier threat as one of the highest ranking executives in an investment firm. Spidops has an intricate web of corporate connections and that in some ways makes it the most powerful bug type. So there you have it folks, a overview of almost every relevant bug type in OU throughout the generations. And we can see that bug types tend to be not the best. Very few bug types actually rise to OU prominence and often when they do it's like the same bug types, Scizor and Volcarona coming back repeatedly to claim the throne once again. They keep designing new bug types, they're giving it a go, but most of them seem to fall flat and just be held back by their typing too much. It says a lot about the inherent disadvantages of the type itself, that this is a trend that continues throughout the years. What do you think of the bug type? Do you like its design? Who was your favorite bug type in the franchise? Mine is probably Heracross, I would have to say. And what would you like me to talk about next? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching.